day everyone. Today we shall be examining the topic statistics. Statistics um, is an, a branch of mathematics that has come into limelight. In the past um, 20 years people are beginning to study statistics really and um, statistics mainly is the science of collecting organizing, summarizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting numerical data for the purpose of making good decisions. In everyday life uh, activities, everybody needs to make decisions. We need to make not only decisions, but good decisions. And the branch of statistics, as I just mentioned, I said, it involves collecting, organizing, summarizing, presenting, analyzing, and Interpreting numerical data. Now, we need to understand what this aspect has to do with mathematics. We all know that by so dealing with mathematics, we talk about numbers most of the time. But this aspect of mathematics, which I call statistics, is very, very important and very applicable. Statistics helps us in our society today in every aspect. In fact, almost every field needs statistics. Almost every field of study, almost every um, work or let me say activities that we involve ourselves in need statistics. Now let me come to this. When you want to deal with statistics, we need to collect data. Now why do we need to collect data? We need to collect data Data is more like raw information, raw information, or let me say a meaningless set of information. So the process, or let me say what statistics wants to do, is to now refine our raw data. You know, we have what we call raw materials. Gold, when we see them, raw. Most people used to say you don't like gold until it goes through refining. And after the refining, it comes out shiny. So the data, when you collect them, you need to go through a process of organizing, process of summarizing, presenting. You have to analyze it. Then whatever you have analyzed needs to be interpreted. And after it's been interpreted, you need to use it to make good decisions. In banks today, they need statisticians. A statistician is a person who is knowledgeable in the area of statistics. A person who deals with numbers, analyzing the numbers, and bringing out good decisions. Schools need statisticians. The government needs statistics, statisticians. Every aspect of our life, we need statistics. In fact, mommies and daddies that cook at home, they need statistics. How do I mean? When uh, mommy takes a particular sample of soup and tries to taste it, she's taking a sample of the soup. And by the time she puts it in her hand and tastes, she generalizes on the whole soup. So she has only taken a bit, a bit of the soup and tasted it and said, okay, the soup is actually sweet enough for the whole house to eat. But really, if we really need to go through the whole process, she's supposed to take the whole soup before she can conclude. Because the whole pot is actually filled with soup. By the time you take a part, how will you say? So that's what statistic does. It just takes samples, takes some aspects, because if we deal with the whole population, now in statistics, population simply is the topic, or let me say, what we are really considering, if I'm trying to find out something about animals, those set of animals in my population, if I'm trying to find out something about human beings, that human being is my population. So it's not like the population that we know, that is the kind of um, general people that we have in, our, in the kind, kind of society. So I'll be examining what we call ungrouped data. On group data, under on group data, there are a lot of things we can find out. 
under ungrouped data. But what is ungrouped data? A set of data that comes raw. Re the way they come is the way we record them. We just, maybe we want to get the marks of students in a particular class, maybe in mathematics. Now, let's take this. Consider the ages of some students that we take this way. 10, 8, 9, 11, 10, 9, 9, 8, 12, 8. These are ages of students in GS1 class of a particular school. So you notice that this student comes, how old are you? 10. The other one comes, how old are you? 8. You start recording them, not classification. So in this set of data, we shall study how to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, and this set of um, statistics that I talk about, we call them measures of central tendency or we call them measures of location. So we have three main types of things that we are going to examine today. The mean, median, and the mode. So if you are given a set of numbers on grouped data and you are asked to calculate the mean, there is a particular way of doing this. We need to find out the formula for calculating mean. Mean is equal to solution xi over n. Solution xi over n. Submission is from the word sum, addition. So the numbers that we have, we call them variables. And why do we call them variables? Because it can take any value. With a particular student comes, you are 10. We recorded that. The other one says 8 years. The other one 9. So that means it varies. The, the values are not constant. So we can call this x1, x2, x3 up to because this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We stop at x10. So our xi is just telling us that the numbers can go on and on. As it is now, we have 10 numbers. So the mean here is simply the mean equals to the addition of all these numbers. 10 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11 plus 10 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8 plus 12 plus 8. Now, divided by n. n is the total number, which is 10. Thank you for the question. I'm going to... The question is, how did I come about n? n is talking about the numbers of students whose age we have recorded here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we recorded the ages of 10 students and that is where the hand comes from. So if we have 15 students, then it means we are going to divide by 15. If we have 20 students, we are going to divide by 20. After adding the 20 ages, we divide by 20. So, and that is how I come about 10, and not one of the 10s that we have here. All right, so by the time we had these numbers together, we have 94. So that's 94 divided by 10. It is 10 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11 plus 10 up to plus 8 gives us 98. And that results to 9.4. So that is the mean. 
in some textbooks or majorly people represent me with x bar so you might find it like x bar equals summation x i over n which is from here we have um, 94 divided by 10 and that is 9.4 so that is the mean now I have a question from the house the question is how did I come about 9.4 I divided 94 by 10 now when you are dividing like this we have 1 0 mostly it is written as 94 divided by 10 so since we are dividing you move the point because this is actually if I'm going to write I can write this as 94.0 which is still 94 so there is a point here point 0 if I move it I move it once so I move it once because I have one zero if we have divided by 100 that means we are going to move the point twice so now that I have moved the point to this place then it becomes 9 point 4 because the point has moved away from here to the middle of 9 and 4 so that's how I got 9.4 so in cases where you have something like uh, 12 1 2 3 divided by 100 then this will give us there is a point here 1 2 and the answer is 1.23. So that's how to do the division. And that's how I came about 9.4. Let me explain 9 to 4 divided by 10 in another form. You know, this we have 90 and 4. That's actually 94. So that means we are going to find how many 10s in 90. We'll find 9 of them. So 9 and we have 4 remaining but the 10 is bigger than 4 so you have to make it the remainder and that is 9.4 so in that way too we can also get the value 9.4 dividing 94 by 10 when data are presented the way I said earlier 10 8 9 11 10 9 9 8 so 8 we have something we call the frequency table because most students think the frequency table is what we call the grouped data and when it comes like this is the ungrouped data no we can classify data like this in the frequency table we can also classify the, um, the group data also in the frequency table so what is frequency table the word frequency is just talking about how often something occurs so if I want to present this data in the frequency table I have it like this the smallest I have ages because there are ages of students so if we are dealing with the max then we can write max here then write frequency So the first age, or let me say the smallest age is 8. This is 8. Now you count how many times does 8 occur? 1, 2, 3. So the frequency for that is 3. Also, we have 9. 9 occurs 3 times. 10, 1, 2. So the frequency is 2. And we have uh, 12, 11, once, and 12, once. So in this case, you might be asked to obtain the mean also. Now what this is simply telling us is that 8 occurs three times, nine occurred three times, 
10 two times that is three students are of age 8 three students are of age 9 two students of age 10 one student of age 11 one student of age 12 so if you are now asked to find the mean in this case it might not be easy to use this what if we have 50 students what if we have 100 students what if we have 500 students are we going to start saying this plus this plus this plus this 500 places before dividing by 500? So that's why the frequency table helps us, or that's why we need to use the frequency table. So for us to now calculate the mean when it comes in this form, we improve on the formula and go this way. The mean h bar is equal to solution f x divided by summation f. So what is this saying? Summation, like I said earlier, is the addition of the multiplication of the frequency and the x's, which is the ages. And let's use it this way. And x is now the ages because they are variables. It could take any value. Then the frequency standing for f. Now how do we go about this? We do it this way. X F. Now since my formula is of this form, then I need to think of what is Fx. What is Fx? Fx is simply the multiplication of X and F. Fx. Xf. Because A times B is A B. A, B times A is also A B. B A is A B in mathematics. So X F or F X. I think it's easy to pronounce using F X. So we go like this. We have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The frequency 3, 3, Two, one, one. So now we have Fx, which is eight times three, twenty-four. Three times nine, twenty-seven. Two times ten, twenty. Eleven times one, eleven. Twelve times one, twelve. So my solution Fx is now the addition of all the fx's and solution f is the addition of all the f's so by the time i had this together you notice that this is 3 plus 3 which is 6 plus 2 8 plus 1 9 and plus 1 10 so we have 10 and if we had this together also we get 94 so there is no difference in this and this, actually. It's just that we had to repeat the numbers, adding them together, divide by 10. But here, we have presented it in the table, and it helps us to obtain the answer easily. So, the addition of all this is 94, and that's what we call summation Fx. Fx is a single entity. So, addition of all the Fx and summation F, addition of all this. So our mean is 9.24 divided by 10. Then x bar is 9.4. Very good question. The question is this. What is the advantage of this method of calculating the mean over the first method that we have used? You realize that this method captures the whole data in the table. Number one, it makes it neater. It makes it even presentable and not scattered like this one. I said earlier, I said, if we have 500 students that have recorded their ages, do you not want to start counting or start picking them like that? One, two, three, add it together, 10 plus eight plus this plus this, up to 500 students. It's, it's cumbersome. And in fact, it even takes the whole space. If I look at this, because of space, I have to break it down and come under here so that I get, I capture the whole 
our numbers. So in this case, like I said earlier to in my definition, statistics is a science of analyzing data, is summarizing it, we present the data. So this is one way of presenting data, presenting it in the frequency table. So it helps us to capture, and look at this, it makes it neater, it makes the whole numbers come out. Now look at this one, I said eight here, you just, when you are counting, you only focus on eight. Look out for how many eights we have there. Then record. By the time you move to the next one, nine, you are only looking for nine. So count the number of nines. This is three, and so on and so forth. In fact, if you use this method, you might have even at the maybe nine plus eight plus eight. You might not even see this two. You might have mixed things together. So it's better as always to present this way. But if we have small data, let's say ten, just like this, or five. You can easily say, okay, this plus this plus this divided by 5, this plus this plus this divided by the numbers that we have. So it will be easier that way. This method is better when you have a large number of data. Another measure of location is median. Like I said, it's also a measure of central tendency. So considering the ages of students that we were talking about earlier, the median really is the middle number after rearranging the data in increasing or decreasing order. So median is the middle number after rearranging the data in increasing or decreasing order. That means any set of data we come across, before looking for the middle number, the data needs to be rearranged. Like the, this one, 10 is coming before 8, so it's more like not organized. So we need to find a way to organize the number then pick out the middle number. So in this case we have 10 numbers. Rearranging this, we have 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12. Now, having recorded this and reordered it, this one is in increasing order. That is, 8 is smaller than 9, so 9 is bigger than 8, 10 is bigger than 9, 11, and 12. So it's increasing. You could also start from 12, 11, but I think it's easier to use the increasing order than the decreasing order. So we need to locate the middle number. In this case, we have 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's impossible for us to really pick out one single number in the middle. So what do we do? Divide the data into 2. Uh, 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So the, five, the first 5 ends here. And the second 5 starts here. So... Where it ended in the first part, they pick it with the other one. So that's how to locate the middle number. When the data is even, because here we have 10, and 10 is an even number. So median here is now 9 plus 9 divided by 2. And that will give us 18 divided by 2. That is also 9. So the median is 9. But we need to examine a case where we have an odd number and not even like this. But when we have even number, let's say 20, 16, 
12, 8, you always have two numbers in the middle. So whatever the two numbers are, it might not be the same, because this one is just coincidentally the same. It might be 7, 6, it might be 9, 10, it might be 2, 5, whatever it is, add them together and divide by 2. It gives us the median number. That's a very good question. And the question goes thus, why do I have to divide by 2? This is more like a mini mean. How do I put it? Why, why did, I, did I say that? I'm looking for the mean of the two numbers in the middle. So because we have two numbers, I divide by 2. When we are we are calculating mean, we had 10 numbers. And that was why we divided by 10. If we have 5, we have to divide by 5. If we have 7, we divide by 7. So because we have two numbers in the middle here, that's why we divide by 2. So any time you have questions of, like this, and we have two numbers in the middle, we always divide it by 2. Because we have just two numbers. Thank you. We have another question here, another example. The question, find the median of... 17, 34, 13, 22, 27, 44, 8, 31, and 13. If you count this number, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, this set of data is odd. 9 is an odd number. Numbers that are not divisible by 2 without remainder. If we divide 9, we have 4, remaining 1. But here, we have 10. This is even. It is divisible by 2 without remainder. So even numbers are numbers which are divisible by 2 without remainder. While odd numbers are numbers. After you divide them by 2, they always have remainder. So 7 is an odd number. 5 is an odd number. 3 is an odd number. 15 is odd. So in this case too, 9 is hot. Here we have 10, actually even. So to find the median of this set of data, we need to first rearrange. Don't forget, it's easy. Students easily make the mistake. They always remember that, okay, it is the median number, but they forget to always rearrange the set of data first. So we rearrange this in ascending order. So we have The smallest number, 8, 13, 13, we have um, 17, we have 22, we have 27, we have 31, we have 34, and 44. So, if we count again, 1, 8, 13, 13, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, if we divide 9 by 2, we have 4, remaining 1. So, we count again, just like we counted here. We had 4 on this side. So, the last part is, um, the last number on this first 5 is 9. But here... We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and the fifth number is 22. If you count from here also, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the number in the middle is also 22. So when the data is odd, we always have one number in the middle. But when it is even, we have two numbers in the middle. So in this case, 22 is the median. Let me say... Median equals 22. Now we move on to the third measures of location, which is mode. Mode is simply the number for the highest frequency. What I mean is that number which occurs most.
the number with the highest frequency is the mode. So I will use an example to quickly illustrate this. Find the mode. of the following numbers. Thirteen, fourteen, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen, eighteen, nineteen, 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 twenty-one. So for us to obtain the mode here, we need to find out which number occurs most. 14 is occurring twice, 13 once, 15 once, 18 twice, and 19 three times. So because 19 occurs most, don't forget, mode is the number with the highest frequency. So we say that mode is equal to 19.